Hello and welcome to this continued series on the Godot engine. We're going to be looking at a add-on that I have freely available that is a singleton pattern. I call this add-on Mingleton. We'll see how and why it's useful for you in your game dev. My name is Samuel Asheravello. I am a game dev with over 20 years of experience, the last decade or so specifically in the Unity game engine, educating and entertaining with that technology, and I've shipped titles for PC, Steam, Xbox, iOS, Android, and more. In addition to doing development on commercial titles, I also create educational materials around game development. Again, historically focused in Unity, but I'm doing more and more Godot and I'm loving it. I have game development courses for doing 2D game dev and UI, as well as C-sharp based courses for things like unit testing, MVC architecture, physics in Unity gaming, and more. So let's talk about Godot. As I create more resources, I'm having them centralized at this link here, Godot Portfolio. You can find game samples, articles, repos, my thoughts, as well as tips on using Godot, and all the videos that are part of the series are located there as well. If you wanna watch them in order, you're invited to because you'll be able to see the project slowly build over time. But if there's a particular topic that's interesting, you can dive right in. They are meant to be episodic, so you can just watch one. The RMC Mingleton for Godot library is offered as a Godot plugin, and you can access it here freely on GitHub. The idea of Mingleton is it's where singletons go to mingle. So I've created singleton processes in the past for other platforms. Typically the way it's handled is one class needs to extend something or have a super class of a certain type or at least an interface in order to be able to take advantage of the singleton functionality. We'll see in this new Mingleton example that the Mingleton is a manager of singletons, and each of those singletons has no particular rules about it. It can be of any type inside Godot and doesn't need to extend or implement any classes or interfaces. That way you have full flexibility on extending anything if you want for your own needs, and you're not tied down by restrictions of a typical singleton library. So the steps for installation are pretty straightforward. They're all listed here. I might update them over time, so definitely take a look at the latest version of the readme. And in step number seven, you can see the dependencies that are required. There's exactly one. You've got to bring in the RMC core library, which is uh, freely available in another repo. And you just do that in a similar process as this. And there's an optional dependency here for the GD unit four library. Bringing this in gives you the ability to create your own unit tests or to see the successful tests run by all these other libraries. So we're gonna take a brief look at that today as well. Let's take a brief step back and talk about the theory. So a singleton is the creational design pattern that lets you ensure that a class has only one instance while it is a global point of access for all those classes. So we can see here like a guru uh, one in the middle here that is larger than the rest and has all the power and all these other classes are able to access that one. Now this is really useful when you wanna have some global data that can be represented only once and it's a really nice pattern to be used in gaming. It's somewhat controversial in how singletons get plugged in. So if singletons are not right for you and your workflow or the way your team works, then by all means, don't do it. But I find it tremendously successful in the projects that I'm on and you just need to know how and when to use it. There's lots of theories about the best practices. But assuming you do want to use singletons in Godot, this is the best way. Now, traditionally, when you see singletons in Godot, it uses the auto load, which is one particular solution. I find that the Mingleton is far, far more flexible in that you don't need to go and administer one or more of your classes in that uh, separate system. This doesn't use auto load whatsoever and is really nice. So we're gonna take a look at an example here inside the code. Here we are in a fresh local project that I've set up in the latest version of Godot. And in the add-ons here, I've dragged in the GD unit four, which I downloaded from the link I mentioned, the RMC core, which is in the link that I just showed, and the RMC Mingleton, which we've just looked at the readme. So you would download those three, drag them into the add-ons of this current project or any project you might wanna create in the future, and you're all set. Then you go up here into the project window, and in the plugins, you just have to check all three of these on if they're not already on. Now these add-ons are all ready to go. So let's take a look at the Mingleton. First, we'll see an example, and then we'll run a test on it before we finish up for today. So in Mingleton, we've got the library itself, as well as some examples on top. We're gonna to take a look at that one example. Here is the scene. 
I'll open that. And the scene is quite simple. It is the Mingleton example, and then some ancillary parts that are needed for some of the testing. Then in the scripts area, we'll open up the Mingleton example. So this sample, as well as many of the other samples that I create in my libraries, it begins with extending a node just so it can be popped into the scene easily. It's something like having an example in Unity that would extend mono behavior, just so you can put it in the scene. There is no requirement on using nodes in any part of this process, other than it's an easy way for me to put this example into the scene. Inside the ready here, I demonstrate some of the different types of functionality you can do. Now this isn't the complete list, there's lots of ways you could do this, and you can imagine in a simple game having exactly one singleton that holds the data that all your systems wanna get at. In a larger project, you may wanna have many more than one singleton. So I show some examples here. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is, as of right now, this might change over time when you look at this sample in the future, but you need to await and uh, instantiate this uh, Mingleton. Once the Mingleton is ready, I've been able to do this without any auto loads whatsoever, so it's really nice. You just do this one line anywhere in your code, and then for the rest of your code base, you never need to await this again if it's already synced up. So I've got a separate class here for some different examples. Let's take a look at each of them in turn. This one here shows the complete API for the Mingleton. So let's step through it one by one. So I cleaned up the view here a little bit. Let's step through the API one by one. First thing you have to understand is the Mingleton's role isn't to be one of your singletons, it's to manage all of your singletons. So when you call Mingleton instance, it is able to add on the ability for you to get at other singletons and manipulate them. So you're always calling mingleton.instance.something, regardless of what it is that you're fetching. Now in this case, I've got a simple singleton example called my singleton. So let's just look at the structure of that singleton itself. I'll click into it. This is a example only class. This isn't something you need to extend. This is something you'd copy and paste as inspiration. Notice here that it is public partial class, which all C Sharp inside Godot needs to be. And then there's no class you need to extend. There's no attributes you need to use. It is just a plain old C object here. You can extend from anything you want, resources, classes, nodes, whatever you need to get the job done. And in this example project, you'll see examples of each of those, but this is the basic one. So let's imagine that we had a project, uh, uh, public value here of uh, public name, uh, I'll use uh, health, public float health equals 100, okay? Now I'm gonna pop back to our previous example here. So if we wanted to have exactly one copy of that health that all of our game could get at, this would be a simple way to do that. So first thing we need to do anywhere in your code, you would add that singleton in. Or if you don't wanna worry about this step, you can use the get or create as a class. And that way, this particular scope doesn't need to know if that thing is available, it just can call it. This is more of a classic singleton approach, and then we can get at any of the properties there like health. So let's say we set it to be 100. So here, imagine all the different areas of your code base would be able to easily access that exact same health value uh, globally, which is very nice. Now this brings in the controversy where not everyone loves a singleton for every use case. It's certainly not the only pattern you want to explore, but for many of us getting started in game dev, prototyping, and even on mature projects, singletons have a home in your project. So I hope that you make Mingleton your way to do it. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff that we can do here. You can always ask the API if a singleton exists. If you want to establish a purposeful life cycle to your singletons, you could always remove it when it, you no longer want it to be accessed. Now there's some maturity that's needed for using that kind of a life cycle. You would then need all of the instances to check if it exists and do some other things. So just letting autocomplete here show us some of the other options. Add singleton, get singleton, has singleton, remove singleton, and then that get or create class that we've got there. Now you can also use get or create as, as a node or as a resource. The reason that these are handled distinctly is if you think about it, instantiating them needs a slightly different setup, which you can either custom control or you can let the Mingleton system handle it for you. Getting a class just calls its constructor. 
A node would call the constructor and add it to the tree so that it exists in your scene. And a resource is handled quite uniquely as well because the way the Godot resources are loaded from your file system into your game at runtime. So you've got all of those abilities to run those there. And then returning us here to the full demo, I'm just gonna scroll down. Here's an example of the node. Here's an example of node where the node itself does some handling inside. You could take a look at that example. Here's examples around using singleton resources. And if I clean up the view a little bit, we can see a very simple example. I don't even need to use the full resource path. The system will automatically find if there's just one my singleton resource B in your project, it'll grab it. And if you're not too familiar with how resources are loaded, this is not trivial. It's quite nice that it looks it up for you. So you'd be able to, again, get at that particular resource globally through your system classes. Lastly, I want to show running unit tests. So here inside the RMC Mingleton, we've got our library. We took a look at the examples and there's also tests. So if I right click and I run that test suite, Then down here in the GD unit console, I'm getting all of the tests that I run on top of Mingleton. Now this is optional. You don't need to have the unit tests in your project if you don't want to, but it demonstrates the way that I ship these with the Mingleton itself so that I've tested this functionality out. And if you're ever curious about a corner case or you find a bug and you report it to me, what I would do on my end is create a unit test that proves, hey, the bug indeed exists. I would fix the bug and then I would leave that unit test to hopefully demonstrate that forever then the bug doesn't return. You can also add your own custom unit test to explore how this works. You can look at the unit test to learn more about how the API works as well. So it's kind of a living documentation. It's quite nice. So that's it for taking a look at the RMC Mingleton. I've demonstrated a little bit about why singletons might be useful in a project, talked about how typically this is handled inside Godot with the auto load, which I didn't go through all the negatives about using auto load. It certainly has its purpose, but it's nice that I was able to solve this Mingleton solution without any use of auto load for my classes or for your classes. And you're able to get some of that same power uh, without all of that uh, setup. Then we've seen some of the examples, also unit tests running on top of those examples of how Mingleton can be used inside your projects. So thanks for coming along with me as we've talked about the RMC Mingleton. I'm available for remote contract hire. You can contact me from the link there for Unity Game Dev and Unity Game Dev instruction and education, creating material like this, exploring new topics within Unity, Godot, and other game platforms. Thanks.